من على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فاعلم انه لا اله الا هو صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us sit in a gathering of the learning and remembrance remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was once the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was <coughs> there was a majlis of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam going on where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was teaching people something giving ilm So there's three people came and looking at the majlis of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they stood there for a bit and then this is a hadith in Bukhari by the way one of them went away did not want to stay the other two stood and thought for a bit then one of them joined the majlis and one of them sat at the back so after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the, the reason why i'm narrating this hadith is i'm not trying to reprimand anybody or put anybody down but these majalis how huge of a blessing these majalis are we don't understand this is this is a blessing for first and foremost for myself that when we sit in the gatherings of ilm and remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower upon us shower upon us of course that this hadith is about the the majlis of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but if you look at it i'll complete the hadith inshallah but if you think about it it is all about showing and presenting yourself to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so those sahaba were very fortunate people that they found the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam alive and were able to sit in the gathering of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but even when you show allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are ready to learn your deen we are ready to rec- to gain your ma'rifa because in reality ilm is the ilm of oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all ilm is basically the ilm of oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is how what we keep on improving in so there is no prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to directly teach us these days the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is here and in fact in the beginning of this book he's he's a great alim of hadith and he has said that to read the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to gain from it is to some extent that gathering of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to some extent to whatever extent but anyway so after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was deliver, done you know done with his majlis he said should i tell you about these three people should i tell you about these three people the f- one of them came and presented themselves to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of them came and brought themselves to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa aw allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him into his fold fa aw aw is we read in surah zuha alam yajidka yatiman fa aw right aw is to f- to provide everything for somebody to provide a station to provide harbor for someone to provide your full protection to someone so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam alam yajidka yatiman fa awa did we not find you yatim did we not find you an orphan and we provided you with protection for we 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 the same word awa that we provided protection for you we took you into our fold we provided a a perimeter for you where you were protected so the situation whatever we are we may be living in imagine if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself takes us into his fold what better what more full proof security can that be can 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 there be more than the protection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 
how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We all know. But if you think about it, he is born an orphan. And there is nobody willing, except for a very few people, who are willing to accept his message. And the message that he is going to deliver, that has been put upon his shoulders, is basically means that you have to go against every single body. Everybody will say one thing and you have to come up with something that is not only new to these people but also very much against what they love and what they respect so much. Imagine these people would consider these idols their gods. They would respect them like a god. They would, they would go around them. And this is this, this young man, 25 years of age, is telling them that, and he's an orphan, he's an orphan. He's got family, but nobody to protect him right away, right? Nobody of his direct family. The, the first one alive at this point, the closest one is his uncle, right? And what, what is the message that he's giving to the world? That all that you are doing is wrong and you are headed to Jahannam. You are, if you keep on doing that, you are going to Jahannam. You are angering Allah. And they have been doing it for very many years. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we are going to protect you. We are going to protect you. We are going to provide for you. We are going to make a harbor for you. If that is granted to us as well. If that is granted to us as well. Can anyone, can anyone snatch us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself the one providing protection for us. Who dares to snatch us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So my dear respected brothers, Dr. Abdul Haysa Arifi rahimahullah, my grand shaykh, the, these mashayikh, of all their teachings are based on the Quran and Hadith. Sometimes they would say it directly and mention a Hadith, sometimes they will not. He, he said that these majalis, these majalis are a sanctuary for you. These are a sanctuary for you. You come here, you come in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the, you come here for one hour or 30 minutes, you will feel the effects of this protection and this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the whole week and sometimes the whole life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. But just by a simple act of coming and sitting in the majlis of ilm, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah is narrated under the virtues of ilm. That the, the, these three people came. One of them said in the majlis of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a person came and presented themselves to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah subhanahu wa taala took them. Allah subhanahu wa taala took them in His fold. The other two people, the second person, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "May Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from being that." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the second of the third shied away from Allah subhanahu wa taala. They shied away. So Allah shied away from them. They shied away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah shied away from them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the third person went back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turned their back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah turned their back on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being any of those people of the second and the third kind. Wherever you find a gathering where some knowledge is being imparted or some remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking place. Whatever time you can find, be a part of it, be a part of it. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you benefits. Yes, I mean, there's people who are connected with one specific shaykh and they are learning deen from them. And then if they keep on going everywhere, then they will become confused. So for those people, it is fine that they only stick to one shaykh and, you know, learn from them because they are taking them on a path, they are being their guide. So that is fine. But wherever you find a gathering of ilm and hadith and zikr and tafsir and those kind of things, even for a, don't turn your back on them. Don't turn your back on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the importance of these things. Today, inshallah, we intend to con conclude this chapter. <clears throat> So there's a few miscellaneous things remaining. One is that when we promise somebody something, be it how trivial it may be, if we do not fulfill it, then that is also a lie. That is a practical lie. And that is sometimes 
in one hadith that I've been narrating and it's coming here, one version of that, that, that hadith. Let's read the hadith first. عن أبو هريرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آية المنافق ثلاث إذا حدث كذب وإذا وعد أخلف وإذا تمن خانة هذا أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه سلم عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نفر مايا منافقي نشانية تين هي جب بات كريغا تو جهور بوليغا جب بات كريغا تو اس کو پورا نہیں کريغا جب اس کو کسی چیز کا امانت دار بنا دیا جائے يعني کوئی چیز کے امانت دے دی جائے تو اس میں خیانت کريغا Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu has narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the signs of a munafiq, of a hypocrite are three. One is that when he speaks, he would speak a lie. When he would promise something, he would not keep it, he would not fulfill it. And when he is given something, something is given in his trust, they will breach that trust. So we've read all these thing, things in detail, but just imagine these things, so a lot of times, and this is very common, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, all of us, myself included, we will make a promise and we will not fulfill it. And we'll, we'll just think it's not, it's, it's nothing. We'll commit to being some, at some place at some time and 10-15 minutes we are late, it, that doesn't even matter to us. These are all signs of a munafiq. These are all signs of a hypocrite. In the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. <coughs> ha, the thing to remember is that the hypocrisy, hypo, hypocrisy is of two kinds. One is hypocrisy of aqidah. Hypocrisy of aqidah. That with your aqidah, with your heart, you do not, you are not a Muslim inside. And you are just portraying, portraying yourself to be a Muslim. In fact, another narration of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has said, وَإِن صَلَّى وَصَامَ وَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ مسلم. These things, if they are found in a person, these are the sign of a munafiq. Although that person may be praying and may be fasting and Out of their own thinking, they might be thinking that they are Muslim. We understand Zu'um on a Kishkar doing, we say, he has a Za'am of this thing. He, from his own side, he thinks, he himself thinks that he's a Muslim. But he's a Munafiq. So, a person who has these kind of things and says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and firmly believes in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to be the final Nabi, they are not a Munafiq of Aqidah, which is that they are not munafiq by their creed, by their belief, but they are a munafiq or a hypocrite through their action. So they are practically, they have the signs of munafiq. And that's true even if they pray, even if they fast, even if they think they are, no matter how much they think they are Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from these things. And Ali wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-idatu daynun. Had Ali and had Abdullah ibn Masood رضي الله عنه has narrated this is a riwayat here that Rasul Akram صلى الله عليه وسلم نے فرمایا کہ وعدہ بھی ایک طرح کا قرض ہے Had Ali and Abdullah ibn Masood رضي الله عنه have narrated that Rasul Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that promise is also a kind of a um, debt so if you promise something someone someone something then it is as if a debt a debt you've put a debt on yourself so you should try to Fulfill it to your best. Ha. Huh. When you've promised something that is against the Sharia, ah, then that promise is not is not going to be fulfilled. And there's no going to be no sin in that. An Abdullah ibn Abi al Hamsa Kala Bayatun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Kabla an yubath wa bakiat lahu bakiatun fawa wa fawaatuhu an atihi bihafi makani fanasit. فذكرت بعد ثلاث فإذا هو في مكانه فقال لقد شققت علي أنا ها هنا منذ ثلاث أنتظرك عبد الله بن الحمساء بن أبي الحمساء رضي الله عنه سيرواته كي من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كي بعثت سبحله يعني آس الله عليه وسلم كي جوهي ملي بحلي أسس بحله كي باته آس خريد وفروخت كي معاملة كيا اور كوش أدا کرنا باقي رأي گيا تو من آس وعدا كيا كي من اسي جگا لے کر آتا ہوں پھر میں بھول گیا اور تین دن کے بعد مجھے یاد آیا میں اس کو لے کر اس جگہ پہنچا تو دیکھا کہ آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اسی جگہ موجود ہیں آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ تم نے مجھے بڑی مشکل میں ڈالا اور بڑی زحمت دی میں تمہارے انتظار میں تین دن سے یہی ہوں اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم Abdullah ibn Abil Hamsa عنہ has narrated that before the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم getting the first wahi, I 
did a transaction with the Prophet ﷺ of some sort. Then whatever I had to give, some of it remained. So I promised the Prophet ﷺ that let me go and bring it right here. Then I forgot. Three days later, I remembered it. And I took that thing, remaining part, and went there. So I saw the Prophet ﷺ is there at that place. The Prophet ﷺ said that you put me in a great difficulty and you put me through so much. I have been here waiting for you for three days. So this is this is the way our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fulfill his promises. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. <laughs> Even in trivial things, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us some of the akhlaq of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way he used to do things. There's two more hadiths that basically say عن زيد بن الألقام أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من وعد رجلا فلم يأتي أحدهما إلى وقت الصلاة وذهب الذي جاء ليصلي فلا إثم عليه زيد بن الألقام رضي الله عنه سلم بعده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فرمايا كي جس شخص نے کسی دوسرے شخص سے کسی جگہ آ کر ملنے کا وعدہ کیا پھر نماز کے وقت تک ان میں سے ایک نہیں آیا اور یہ پہنچ جانے والا نماز پڑھنے کے لئے اپنی مقررہ جگہ سے چلا گیا تو اس پر کوئی گناہ نہیں ہوگا زہید ابن عرقم رضی اللہ عنہ as narrated رحمہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said that if somebody promises someone to meet somewhere and then they reach there but one of these two does not reach and the time for salah comes then the person who has reached there leaves for salah then this person who has gone will not be a sinful will not be considered a sinner عن زيد بن ألقم عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا وعد الرجل أخاه ومن نيته أن يفيا ولم يجئ للميعاد فلا إثم عليه ولم يحبئ للميعاد فلا إثم عليه ولم يجئ للميعاد فلا إثم عليه الزيد بن القام رضي الله عنه سلم بعده كي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سي نقل كرته كي عب عليه الصلاة والسلام نفر مايا كي جب كسي آدمي نه اپنے كسي بھائي سے آنے کا وعدہ کیا اور اس کی نیت یہی تھی کہ وہ وعدہ پورا کرے گا لیکن وہ کسی وجہ سے کسی شریع حضور کی وجہ سے وقت مقررہ پر نہیں آسکا تو اس پر کوئی گناہ نہیں ہے عن زيد بن القام رضي الله عنه نريد بس زيد بن القام رضي الله عنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said that if somebody promises someone something to reach somewhere, they make a promise that they will reach somewhere at a certain time and then they intended to be there but they were not able to make it because of a shari'i uzr. What is a shari'i uzr? An ob- a compulsion which is also considered valid in the eyes of sharia. So extreme sickness, weather not permitting or that person dying or those kind of things, those kind of great things, huge things, then, or if that person is um, captivated by someone, or there's fear of enemy in the middle, in the way, then these are the things that the Sharia considers as compulsions. So if, if, if one of those is there, then that person will not be considered a sinner. The other thing to note from it is the Prophet ﷺ has made an exclusion that that person intended to fulfill that promise. If there was no intention in the beginning to begin with, then this is a hundred percent a sin. Hundred percent a sin because this is not a wada, this is not a promise, this is a deception. The last part of this chapter that I wanted to read is that there is certain places where lying is permitted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Primary, the, the basic scheme is that when two Muslims are on the brink of fighting with each other and harming or killing each other, then at that time, saying a good thing on behalf of the other person. So, for example, two people are fighting, or you know that they are at odds with each other and they are going to start fighting and they are going to start, you know, harming each other. You go to one person and secretly tell them that the other person, the other party was saying such and such good thing about you. So in that state, that is also true for man and wife. If 
man and wife are fighting with each other and they are going to uh, you know go to the extreme step then at that point it is permissible that to reconciliate between them somebody speaks a lie on behalf of the husband or speaks a lie on behalf of the wife to the other to the other spouse and ummi kulsum qalat qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam laysa alkadhab alladhi yuslihu bayna an-nas wa yaqulu khayra wa yanmi khayra so there's three things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned. Ummi Kulthum radiyallahu anhu said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the man is not a liar and a liar who is trying to fight the people of the people who are trying to fight the people of the people and to reach the good and 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 the good. So a person will not be considered a liar Ummi Kulthum radiyallahu anhu quoted from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that that person will not be a liar and sinful who number one the first condition is that those people are about to fight or they are fighting they have been fighting on between these people he does it with sincerity and only says the good things so it's not about it's not permitted to say a, a lie and tell a false thing that is bad but a good thing from one person to the other so if these conditions are fulfilled and that person intends good then things of khayl good things on part of the other person about that other person can be said and this will not be considered a lie care should be taken because sometimes people have a habit of fighting. There's there's some people who just like to fight, especially back home. You may have thing. So you, a person should judge and assess the situation. If you are going to step in the middle and you know secretly maybe speak a lie or something to reconcile between them, but their personalities are such that they are going to start fighting maybe a year later or two over something else, then care should be taken not to step in between the two of them. Why? Because later on they may find out that you spoke a lie on their behalf and then they will leave their fight and start come after you. So anyway care should be taken. One should judge the situation. If people, if there is some kind of people who just like to fight. Their life is basically fighting. So we shouldn't go in between and you know lose our respect and honor by going in these, in, in these, between these kind of people. Alhamdulillah, this chapter is complete. Uh, next week we can start. Just <coughs> trying to check if we left any hadith in the middle. Inshallah, we'll read Surah Yasin. Uh, try to complete the count of 41 times. And then we'll make dua. <coughs> <coughs>